Hi guys and welcome to my channel. So today I want to tell you something about gallon matrices. Um, these are matrices that we use in uh, theoretical physics, in particle physics, and specifically in SU3. So today I want to show you how you can uh, calculate these Gelman matrices uh, without structure constants and all those complications. So uh, this is really straightforward and very simple way. So uh, when we talk about generators of the gauge group SU3, uh, we must say that this is of course color gauge group and uh, uh, SUN in general, this group has uh, this number of generators. So it's uh, N squared minus one. So this means when talking about SU3, it means that uh, this group has a number of generators eight because three to the power of two minus one, it's overall eight. So number of generators for SU3 group is eight. Now, in literature, you'll find that Gel Gelman matrices are actually the generators of SU3 group. So, since Gelman matrices are generators of SU3 group, this means that there are eight Gelman mat matrices. So, um, SU2 group, for example, has three generators because it's two to the power of two minus one, four minus one, overall three. And these generators, these uh, three generators, are called Pauli matrices, and they are listed here as sigma 1, 2, and 3. Uh, why am I mentioning these matrices? Because uh, Pauli matrices are uh, actually the matrices we will use as, uh, as a sort of basis for uh, structuring uh, uh, Gelman matrices. And let's see how. So, uh, these are the, those matrices, and you can see um, the, something specific. Only sigma 3 is diagonal, and the overall uh, property here is that the trace for all three of them is actually zero. When I say the trace of a matrix, it means, uh, for example, trace of this matrix sigma 1 is zero because trace in general is sum of diagonal elements. So 0 plus 0 is overall 0. For sigma 2, it's the same thing because we have on diagonal 0 numbers. And when it comes to sigma 3, we have numbers 1 and minus 1. So 1 plus minus 1, it's overall 0. So the common property for these Pauli matrices is that their trace is equal to zero. And this is actually the, the same property that we'll use, of course, uh, for Gelman matrices as well. Now, in making first three Gelman matrices, we'll start from sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. Uh, one important thing, so when we talk about SU2 group, and uh, the generators of SU2 group are, uh, as you can see, poly matrices, matrices that are of the dimension 2 times 2. So it means that if we want to make Gelman matrices, uh, which are generators of the group SU3, this means that uh, these matrices will be of dimension 3 times 3. So it will be something like this, 3 times 3. So let's start. First Gelman matrix, uh, matrix will be made of sigma 1. So what have we done? We have uh, taken this sigma 1 and put it in the 3 times 3 uh, matrix. And the, the, other the remaining elements of this 3 times 3 matrix are actually 0, as you can see. And the trace is, of course, 0. So 0 uh, plus 0 plus 0, it's overall 0. And this is the same procedure that we will apply on the uh, lambda 2 and lambda 3 to uh, uh, get, so, first three Gelman matrices. So the same thing, uh, we take uh, sigma 2 and put it in lambda 2, as you can see it here. And the same thing is, of course, applied for uh, lambda 3. So we take poly matrix sigma 3 
and put it in a, a let's say first uh, box of this three times three matrix and the, the remaining elements are zero. So what about uh, the lambda four and lambda five? This is how we make fourth and fifth Gelman matrices. So we actually do the same procedure. So what have we done so far? We have taken poly matrices um, sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three, and we have just inserted those into three times three uh, matrices. So we will do the same procedure, but as you can see here, uh, this one and one uh, was uh, uh, put here in the, let's say, first box of this three times three matrix. Now we will extend this a little bit and you get the lambda four. So what have we done? We have extended this, let's say, line formed by numbers from Pauli matrix uh, sigma one. So these numbers one and one, we have extended them in order to get lambda four. We will do the same procedure for lambda two uh, in order to get lambda phi. So we take these of diagonal elements, i and minus i, and we extend them, as you can see, to obtain lambda phi. Now, the logical, let's say, procedure would be, okay, since I have done that for lambda four, lambda five, then it would mean that lambda six would be the of the same procedure like this. So we have taken uh, these elements and put it, extend them like this. But this is not what we're gonna do. So lambda six is not obtained in this manner. And later I will explain why is that the case. So let's continue with the procedure of making these um, Gelman matrices. Uh, we have so far lambda one, two, three, four, and five. So um, there are still six, seven, and eight to be made. So we continue. Um, and now we'll continue with a uh, procedure of uh, uh, making lambda six and lambda seven. And something interesting will uh, uh, happen with lambda eight. So what have we done with lambda six? We have just moved the uh, numbers one and one from, let's say, uh, this first line now we have done it to the, we moved it to second line of diagonal for lambda four. And now these numbers, we have moved them uh, uh, to, to the latest, let's say, uh, remaining line of diagonal for uh, constructing the lambda six. Now the same procedure will be done for lambda seven. So we have done that with lambda two, we have taken poly matrix and then these numbers, we have extended them in order to produce lambda five. And uh, now we have moved them to the, let's say, uh, uh, last of diagonal line. So if you have, for example, uh, this form of three times three matrix, so this is like first line, this is second, and this is uh, third or last of diagonal line. So what have we done so far? We have taken Pauli matrix uh, one and to, in order to form lambda one, then lambda four, then lambda six. Then we have taken the second Pauli matrix uh, sigma two, and we have extended those elements in order to produce lambda five and lambda seven. And now we come to the interesting part of how to make um, lambda eight. So in order to uh, form this, let's say lambda eight, I need to say something about the rank of SUN group in general. So there are lots of, let's say, theoretical explanations and definitions and proofs and lemmas, etc., about the rank. So I won't go into the detail of that. So I'll just tell you the, let's say, uh, straightforward definition. So rank of SUN group is just n minus one. That's a number. 
Now, uh, for SU3, because Galvan matrices are generators of SU3 group, and we are talking about that group, so rank of SU3 is just number two, because it's three minus one. Why is this important? Because uh, rank of SUN group tells us the number of uh, generators or matrices uh, that, are, that, 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 that represent these, let's say, uh, generators that have diagonal elements. So for SU3 group, since the rank is number two, it means that um, this group has only two diagonal matrices with, of course, trace zero. Because if you um, uh, pay attention to form of lambda one, two, uh, etc., you see that lambda one has the only zeros on diagonal. A lambda two also has zeros, lambda four, lambda five, etc. The only uh, uh, matrix with the diagonal elements that are not all zero, <laughs> Uh, uh, is lambda 3. So the remaining lambda 8, okay, must be of the similar form, for example, having A, B, and C elements on diagonal that are, that are not equal to 0, and the rest will be equal to 0. So this is what I'm talking about when uh, talking about this trace. Uh, so trace of some, let's say, a matrix A is just the sum of these diagonal elements, and this trace must be zero. Okay, so far we have lambda one, two, three, two, seven, and it's uh, uh, we're only left with the lambda eight to be formed. So we know that lambda eight needs to have these um, diagonal elements that are not zero. So we know from the start that A must be different than zero, B must be different than zero, and C also must be different than zero. But there is another property we also know. We know that the trace of this matrix must be zero. So we know that A plus B plus C is equal to zero. So let's use something else. Now, there is very important property here. It's called standard normalization condition uh, related to these groups, and it can be defined in this form. So trace of, let's say, um, product of two matrices is equal to two times, and this is delta i, j, and this is called Kronecker um, uh, uh, symbol, and it's defined in this form. So if i is different than j, then the delta is just equal to zero. And if i is equal to j, then its value it's, it is one. So, for example, if we are looking for the trace of the product of these two matrices, and you can see it's uh, lambda 1 times lambda 1, so i is 1, and here also j is 1, so it means that i is equal to j, and we take a look, when i is equal to j, this means that uh, delta is equal to 1. So the trace must be 2 times, instead of this, we put number 1, so it's equal to 1. And uh, the different example, if, uh, if we take the trace of the product of lambda 1 and lambda 8, and we see that i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 8, so i is not equal to j, and if i is not equal to j, then the trace must be 0. And this is uh, the, the property that we will use to find the values of a, b, and c. So let's do it. First of all, uh, this is like a, a, a general form of our lambda 8 matrix. And let's do the product. So first we'll start with, of course, first Gelman matrix, and that's lambda 1. So we do the multiplication for lambda 1 and lambda 8, and this is the result. Uh, we see that the diagonal elements are all zeros, so 
overall the result for, for the trace is zero and that does not help us a lot. So we continue. We take now the second lambda matrix and that's lambda two. So we do the multiplication and again, we get that these diagonal elements that we need for trace are all zeros. So that's not helpful as well. So we continue and we do the multiplication with lambda three and lambda eight. And now we get some elements that are not zero, at least not all of them. <laughs> and we can see that the trace now here is A minus B. And since we have that a very important property, that trace is equal to this, we use that and we see that A minus B is equal to zero because uh, I and J are different. And we see from there that a must be equal to B. So this means that, uh, for example, we know that trace of this uh, uh, matrix must be zero. We know that this must be zero. Knowing that A uh, is equal to B or B equal to A, we can put on the place where it was uh, B. Now we put the A. And this is the overall equation we get from where we can uh, uh, extract that C is equal to minus two. And now our lambda eight in general looks like this. And this is something we can definitely use. How? Well, we still have this very important property. So we'll multiply lambda eight by lambda eight. And when I is equal to J as is in this case, we know that the trace must be equal to one. Uh, actually not the trace, but this delta symbol. So the trace will be two times that one, and it means two. So when we sum or add these diagonal elements, it means a square plus a square plus four times a square, we get six times a square. So this must be equal to this. And overall, we get the value of a. And we can put this value into this matrix here. And this is how lambda eight looks like. Uh, since we have the same uh, factor here, one over square root of three, and here the same thing, and here the same thing, uh, we can, for example, take that uh, uh, element and put it just in front, this value one over one third of uh, square root of three. So we're left here with one, here with one, and here with minus two. And this is how it looks now. So this is, let's say, official form of a uh, Gelman matrix lambda eight. And finally, the Gelman matrices look like this. So this is final result. Uh, and this, this was the procedure how we have derived that without using the um, structure of con constants or some other com complicated formulas. So this is pretty simple. Um, if you have, uh, if you like this video, please subscribe because um, we'll do the similar videos for SU5 and other groups. So thank you and stay, stay safe.